Okay, today's lesson is the second part of 2.9, key features, key features of functions. And our goal today is to define intervals of increase and decrease for a function in 2.9. The first part, we used intervals to define the domain and the range. And in this lesson, we're going to use intervals to state when the line is either increasing um, and decreasing. A couple key terms today. Whoops. So we have um, this table right here, and this is the four main types of functions that you'll see in algebra, one and two. Here's what their equations look like. Uh, general equations, obviously, um, they're bound to look different, but the main feature is, you know, when you've got a linear equation, the x, the input variable, is to the first power or doesn't have a degree. Quadratics will always have a input variable that's to the second power. Cubics will always have a input variable that's to the third power and piecewise functions um, you can see really anything piecewise functions is multiple functions put together to form one and you'll notice the correlation between the degree exponent in the equation and the number of intervals that it has so in the last video we focused a lot on linear graphs where there was only one interval it was either an increasing line or it was a decreasing line well today we'll see some quadratics where there'll be two intervals that we have to define, and we'll see some cubics where there's three, and you'll see the correlation between the exponent and the number of intervals, and then piecewise, there'll be multiple intervals. So again, interval is a set of values, and you list those values either with brackets or parentheses. In this case, we're going to use brackets because we know what our endpoints are. And you always list the smallest value first all the way to the largest value last, and then all the um, values in between are assumed to be a part of that interval. And then a union, that's the new word today. Um, that just means to connect multiple sets. And we'll talk a little bit more as we get into the examples. But the main thing is, for union, it's this symbol right here, this capital U. So here we have our graph. This is a linear function. And I'm not sure exactly what the equation for this would be. We could figure it out by finding the y-intercept and then calculating the slope. Um, actually, the slope is negative. The slope would be a negative 4, right? So this equation would look like y equals negative 4x. And then the y-intercept looks like, um, like 3.2. So maybe the equation looks like this. Maybe it's a little bit different, but the slope is right. The y-intercept could be some other number. But the main goal today is to figure out what the interval uh, of the increase or decrease is. And in this case, since it's linear, there's only one interval, and that is an interval of decrease. As the x values get larger, the y values are getting smaller. So when we get larger on the x, our y values are getting smaller. This is a decreasing function. So I would put um, decrease. And if I define the interval of the decrease, because it has in, uh, endpoints, it starts decreasing at negative 3. And it decreases all the way until we get to when x is 5. So when you're using um, intervals to define whether it's increasing or decreasing, you're only looking at the x value. So I'm going to make a little note here. Only use x values for intervals. We're not using the y values for the intervals at all. And we can say it goes to 5, and then it stops decreasing because the line stops. Fairly straightforward. Let's get in a couple more complicated examples. So example number 2. All right, so this is a quadratic. Um, and you can see here the equation is y equals 2 times x minus 4 squared. There's the 2 that I was talking about, minus 6. So with quadratics, there will always be um, two intervals. And if you're looking at this line, let's say the line starts right here, and it ends right here. And what we're doing is we're saying what x values is this line increasing on, what x values is this line decreasing on? So let's focus on the increase first. So is this line right here, so let's, um, I'll put a dot in the middle. 
So if I drew a straight line from here, as straight as I possibly could, right, all the way to here, if this was a straight line, would it be an increasing line or a decreasing line? Well, as the x values get larger, the y values are getting smaller, so this is a decrease right here. Well, the other side of the quadratic, if the left side is a decrease, the other side has to be an increase. And you can see as the x values get larger, 5 to 6, the y values are getting larger. So this side of the line is a increase. So what we're going to do is, for increase, we're going to define the um, interval. Well, the line starts increasing at, it looks like, 4. It starts increasing on 4, and it stops increasing when it gets to 7. So between 4 and 7, we've got a line that's increasing. And for decrease, it starts decreasing at 1. So between 1, and I'll use a different color. So between 1, and it stops decreasing when it gets to 4. So you can see it's going down until it gets to 4, and then it starts changing its direction. Two intervals, one of increase, one of decrease for quadratic. If we were defining the domain, we would say the domain is all x values from 1 to 7, and the range would be all uh, y values from negative 6 to 12. Okay, so this is a cubic function, and cubic functions have equations that are um, to the third power, and they have three intervals. So you can see that the line changes directions three times. So it starts here, it's going up, it's increasing, gets to about right here, and then it changes its direction. Now it's going down. It's decreasing as the x values are getting larger. These y values are going lower. And then again, it changes its direction one more time. And it starts increasing again. So what we're doing is defining the increases and the decreases. I'm going to use um, yellow for our increases. So it starts increasing when x is, it looks like, um, a little bit less than negative 8. I'm just going to use negative 8. And it stops increasing, it looks like, when x is between um, negative 4 and negative 2. So let's just say negative 3. So between these x values, the line's increasing. Now, once it gets to negative 3, the line changes and starts to decrease. And it decreases all the way until we get to about right here, which we can say is 3. It's decreasing. And then it increases again from 3 all the way until about 7 it looks like we'll say this is 7 so we're just defining that so our increases there's two of them and this is we'll, this is when we'll use the union so our first increase starts at negative 8 and it stops increasing when the line gets to negative 3 for x and now because there's a second interval of increase we're going to use this union and I'm not using any spaces as I type this into Schoology. Everything is just um, no spaces at all. So we've got our bracket, number, comma, number, bracket, u. And our second interval, it started increasing at 3, and it stopped at 7. So we can say from 3 to 7, it was also increasing. And that's what it would look like when you've got multiple intervals. The last one would be our interval of decrease. There's only one. So we can say that it started decreasing at negative 3, and it stopped decreasing when we got to a positive 3. Two more examples today. So here we have our piecewise function. You can see the many different slopes. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different slopes. So we've got pretty much 5 different functions that make up this piecewise function. And we're going to do the intervals of increase and decrease. So you can see that the line starts here, and it's going up. It's going um, as the x values get larger, so do the y values. And it changes, it changes its slope, but it's still increasing. So we can say from right here, which we'll assume is negative 5, it's increasing all the way until 
about right here, which we'll assume is negative 1.5 because it's between negative 1 and negative 2. And then right here it goes constant. And then it stays constant until about 0.5. And that's where we're going to pick up because we're not defining the constant interval yet. So it starts decreasing here. It's going down all the way until we get to about 3. So from 0.5 to 3, it's decreasing. I guess I could use these arrows to kind of show that it's increasing. So it's increasing here. It's increasing here. This is just one interval. This is our second interval of decrease. And now our last interval starts increasing again. It takes up right here. And it goes to about right here, which we'll assume is positive 5. So our intervals of increase, there's two of them. We've got our first interval. When it changes um, its slope, it's still increasing. And then our last interval right here make up the 2. So it starts increasing when x is negative 5. And it stops increasing, this line stops increasing at negative 1.5. And the second interval of increase, so we're going to use the union to connect the sets. It starts increasing at 3, and it stops increasing when x gets to 5. And now our line of decrease, there was only 1. It started decreasing at 0.5, and it stopped decreasing when x got to 3. So that would be our intervals for increase and decrease. If we were defining the domain, we would say from negative 5, all the x values, all the way to positive 5. And then the y values, or the range, from looks like about negative 6 would be the smallest y value on the line that has a point on the line, all the way to positive 6. Last example, and this is um, a non-number example, but the process still remains the same. So let's go ahead and look at the line, it starts at A, and it looks like the, the slope or the direction of the line whoops, is an increase. So it looks like this line is going up, and it gets to about right here at C, and it changes its direction. Now it starts to go down, and it gets to D, and it changes its direction, and it starts to go up again, it gets to E changes its direction, starts to go down. And then it gets to G, changes its direction, and then goes up again. So our intervals of increase and decrease, so from A all the way until C, it's increasing. So from A all the way to C, it's an increase. Decreases. And then at C, it changes and becomes a decreasing line. So we got C all the way until it decreases until we get to about D. And then it starts to increase again. So we're going to union this set and we're going to say, well, it's increasing again from D all the way to E. And then it starts decreasing, so we're going to union this set and say, well, it also decreases from E to G. And then there's another increase, the last one, so we'll union again and we'll say, well, it increases from G to H. And that is what you'll be doing today for your homework, along with defining the intercepts and the domain and range for these functions. Remember, no spaces in Schoology. So when you're typing all these in, do not include any spaces. Um, the symbols, however, will be the same. Good luck.